Number 8. New Smyrna Beach In Volusia County, Florida, you could find yourself headed for a vacation at a place called New Smyrna Beach. And on the surface, it looks like a great beach. Many people do go there, but they tend to stay away from the waters, as there are a lot of sharks in the ocean around there. You see, there's a lot of fish just off the coast, and with so much food in reach, the sharks get easily attracted. But a human kicking around in the water could confuse the shark and entice it to take a bite just to see how that strange creature tastes. The beach is also popular with surfers who like to go into these waters where the fish and sharks are and that causes a lot of attacks. In fact, New Smyrna Beach is known as the shark attack capital of the world. Sounds like somewhere I would never want to go on vacation, to be honest. Would you? To give you some hard numbers, in 2017, there were 9 shark attacks. In 2016, there were 15. And in 2008, one third of all the world's unprovoked shark attacks happened on this beach and coast. The 2019 numbers were in the 20s. It's so populated with sharks that they say that anyone who goes to this beach, swimmer or surfer, will be within 10 feet of a shark at any given time. What kind of lunatic would go in the water given those numbers? Number 7. Mumbai, India India is the second most populated country in the world, so it shouldn't come as too much of a surprise that they have a lot of places to swim from pools to rivers, lakes to oceans. However, when it comes to the beaches next to Mumbai, you're better off going someplace else. In fact, these beaches are so bad that they're consistently put on the lists of the most polluted beaches in the world. Yeah, I would never go swimming somewhere with that nickname. How did this happen? Well, it has to do with the sewage of the city. To be clear, Mumbai does have a sewer network, but because of how the city is made, a lot of the trash and waste actually works its way around that system and then goes into various waterways, including the beaches around Mumbai. What's worse, despite this condition being known to the population at large, many residents of Mumbai still regularly throw their garbage and waste in improper places, thus polluting the beaches even more. Every year, the waste in these beaches grows, and it's causing people to get sick. Even people who just let the waters touch them have been documented to have rashes and other skin ailments come upon them. Everything from human waste to food waste to toxic chemicals gets dumped in these waters. Imagine going for a swim in a septic tank. It should be noted that some things have been done to clean up certain beaches around the city. A massive cleanup operation was done at Versova Beach near Mumbai in an effort to make the place better. However, that's just one beach, and there are plenty more that are still filthy in terms of both the waters and the shoreline. But it's progress, and that should be appreciated. Number 6. Black Silty Hole of Death You can find the Black Silty Hole of Death in the Gulf of Thailand, but no one would ever go anywhere near there. Of course, it's got a less intimidating name, the Samaysan Hole. It's the deepest diving site you can find near the nation of Thailand, so naturally a lot of people go there to dive. Those people are taking their lives in their hands. To be fair, it's a worthy dive, it'll take you 280 feet below sea level, but it's in that depth that a lot of those divers have problems. The Samaysan Hole is known for very strong currents. And that's only one issue you'll have. You'll have to deal with ships like oil tankers moving around in the area, which can cause more problems in the water. If that's not enough, you'll find that barracudas are in the water of that hole. Still not enough? The United States at one point actually used the Samaysan Hole as a place to dump ammunition. Unused, unexploded ammunition. You might have a literal blast if you go and swim there, if you know what I'm saying. Let's just say, it wouldn't be pretty. The hole is so dangerous that anyone who dares to attempt it is advised to have multiple backup systems, lights, computers, and a lot of experience diving. Yes, people still go and swim there, but not as many as you might think. And I hope for your sake you're not tempted to try it out. It's not worth it. There are far safer places a person can go diving. 
Number five, Bubbly Creek. If you were to ever go look at the rivers of Chicago, you would eventually find a place called Bubbly Creek. This creek is not a river per se, but it is in fact the South Fork of the South Branch of the Chicago River, and it's got quite a history. You see, this part of the river used to flow into Lake Michigan, but then in the 20th century, the people of Chicago actually got the water to go in reverse. Why? Because Bubbly Creek was polluted, and Lake Michigan was the main water resource for the city, and they didn't want that polluted. So why shouldn't you swim in it? Besides the polluted part, within this part of the river are loads of animal carcasses. There was a meat plant in Chicago that dumped the remains of the animals in the river, and as they decomposed, they released gas that bubbled to the surface. The water is so bad that virtually nothing lives there, except for bloodworms that happily eat the waste. A study was done on the river, and it was found that the bottom three feet of it at some points is all animal remains. That's a layer of decomposing, rotting flesh at the bottom of a river. It's something straight out of a horror film, don't you think? While efforts have been made to fix the creek, many problems still remain with it, including wastewater still being dumped into it and the creek being stagnant in its flow. So, unless you really want to test your luck, don't swim there. How much would someone have to pay you to swim in a place like this? where the riverbed is literally made out of animal carcasses? Tell me in the comments below. Of course, if you haven't already subscribed to the biggest, what are you doing? Subscribe now for more intense videos. Number four, Eagle's Nest Sinkhole. Found in St. Petersburg, Florida, the Eagle's Nest Sinkhole is known as the Mount Everest of diving and for good reason. It may not look like much on the surface, but as you dive down into this body of water, you'll soon find a cave system that is full of passages over one mile long. These passages lead to all sorts of interesting openings, including a cavern as big as a football field. Add to all of that, this sinkhole reaches over 300 feet below sea level. Sounds like a great place to go and dive, right? Well, that's true, but there are some factors you really need to know about. Most people would recommend a certain level of diving experience to do this particular dive. Not the least of which is that regular air usage won't get you that far and could lead to many issues. Plus, the passages within the caves can be both very wide and very narrow. Some are said to be only as wide as a doorway, which, with all the gear you might have, won't be an easy fit. And if you get stuck in one of those small spots, you're in trouble. The paths of the cave can be so winding that they actually had to put in guidelines just so people wouldn't get lost in them. And even then, it wasn't enough to save everyone. Many people have died in the Eagle's Nest sinkhole. Some of them didn't even die of air loss from a ruptured tank. Some simply blacked out from the pressure, and others got tangled up in their own lines, which led to them running out of air. Some will see this spot as the ultimate dive challenge, hence the reference to Mount Everest earlier. But for many, it is certainly not a risk worth taking. Number three, Yenisei River. The Yenisei River is in Russia, and it is the true divider between East and West Siberia. It's also one of the world's largest rivers by discharge. The river is so large, it passes through many major cities in Russia. One major problem though, the river is also radioactive. To be clear, this wasn't an accidental leak of radioactive materials in the river, it was quite intentional. This happened via Bolshoi Balchug, a plutonium factory that would get plutonium to make bombs. And they've been putting the discharge from this process into the river for decades, making it full-on radioactive as a result. The owner of the plant says that there's no real harm in doing this to the river, but numerous communities alongside the river have reported numerous cancers as well as genetic defects. So you tell me, would you want to swim in a radioactive river? Number two, South Pacific Islands. This one might seem a bit vague, but there are a lot of examples of these dangerous waters where vicious animals attacked and ate unsuspecting humans. You see, a lot of people dream of going on vacations to certain islands in the South Pacific and swimming in the clear blue waters that surround them. But what people sometimes fail to take into account is the animals that oftentimes reside in those waters. 
For example, everyone wants to go to Hawaii for various reasons, but those waters have plenty of dangers, including sharks, jellyfish, and more. Australia is also a place where people love to visit for surfing, swimming, and having fun in the water. However, it too has sharks, including great white sharks, box jellyfish, one of the most dangerous jellyfish in the world, and more. Even places like Japan have islands that you can go and relax on, but also have animals that you should stay away from. One example is the coconut crab, a massive beast of a crab that is said to go after humans if it's hungry enough. Allegedly, it was these beasts that might have done something to Amelia Earhart when she crashed on an island deep in the Pacific. This isn't proven, but the famous airplane pilot might not have drowned when her plane malfunctioned. Instead, she possibly crashed on the Nikumaroro Atoll and was viciously consumed by these beasts. The point here is very simple. If you're going to go and do a dive or a swim or a vacation near certain exotic waters, take some time and actually research the waters you're going to be going to, because it could be the difference between life and death. And I'm pretty sure you want to choose life. Isn't that right? Number one, abyssal zone. When you think about the ocean, you might think about how it encompasses our world in many forms. You might also dream of diving down to its very depths to see what's down there for yourself. One problem, if you do fulfill that dream, you're going to die, in various ways in fact. First and foremost, yes, it is possible to go pretty deep into the ocean on a single breath. In fact, the world record holder for free diving or diving without a scuba apparatus is 700 feet below sea level, and it was done by Herbert Nitsch. While this is a praiseworthy feat, even Mr. Nitsch would admit that there were plenty of risks in him attempting such a thing, especially without equipment. But even if you had the scuba gear, daring to dive deeper and deeper into the oceans could kill you in other ways. First and foremost, the deeper you go into the ocean's waters, the more pressure the water is naturally going to have. Once you reach a certain point, the water pressure will be so great it could crush you before you can get to safety. As if that wasn't enough, if you're not properly outfitted for a deep swim dive, you could get decompression sickness, where your body has problems adjusting to the rapid change in pressure you've just gone through, and as such, you can die from it. That's where the abyssal zone of the ocean starts. Even the name is terrifying, and you need a special submarine to even get down there. To top it all off, there are a variety of creatures in the ocean at deeper depths that aren't always the most friendly. That includes squids, sharks, barracudas, bizarre shellfish, and more. The deepest part of the ocean sits within a section of the Mariana Trench known as the Challenger Deep, and it's very deep into the ocean at nearly 36,000 feet. Humanity has reached the Mariana Trench, but Challenger Deep is one of the final frontiers of our exploration. To even think of swimming in those waters is dangerous and foolish, so stick to safe depths if you want to stay alive. Thank you all for watching. What did you think of this look at the various deadly waters of the world? Which ones would you want to test your luck in? Let me know in the comments below, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time right here on The Biggest.